Matty, my man. How are you, brother? Guys, I'm just uh, at Benelli HQ in Melbourne to trial the new Leoncino 800 and 800 trail. These things look really good. They seem to be priced right. The specs look pretty competitive. So we're going to go down the great, great ocean road for a spin. Bit of dirt on the scrambler oriented trail. So let's see what they're all about. Well, we're about halfway to the start of the Great Ocean Road. We just stopped for a snake's hiss and a light refreshment, perhaps. I've had a bit of a mixed relationship with Benelli motorcycles in the past. Some I thought were quite good. The Leoncino 500, this bike's baby sibling, I thought was a really good thing. Uh, the TRK 502X, Snag said he really liked that. Others I felt lent on the quirky side, but initial impressions on the Leoncino 800, quite good, it has a uh, feeling of sturdiness. Uh, feeling of quality, of course I've only just started riding it, it could be a bucket for all I know but we're going to the perfect place to find out how it really performs. We've got a day on the Great Ocean Road and tomorrow uh, across the water to Arthur's Seat, another favourite road of mine so should be good. So underneath me is a 754cc parallel twin which makes 54 kilowatts and 67 newton meters. I can't help but feel that an exhaust system and a good tune would unlock quite a few. More. Oh shit! Had a close call there. Fucking hell, did you see that? I was in first, thought I'd went to second and it didn't go, so when I let go of the clutch, the rear locked up. Oh, sick! <laughs> One of the big differences with the 800 Trail is you get Pirelli Scorpion STR tyres, which are a pretty meaty dual sport tyre. So, while the chassis might not be ideal for off-road, these tyres do give you quite a lot of grip on stuff like this. You can stand up, sort of only just, and the slightly longer travel suspension making fairly light work of small bumps. You know, I must have ridden this road 50 times, but I don't think I'll ever tire of it. Rock structures of such magnitude, water as far as the eye can see, it's been there millions of years before me and surely millions of years after. It really is a sight to behold. And if you get the chance to ride the Great Ocean Road, you'd be crazy not to. Just a little bit of road stuff so far on the Lanchino. It's torque rich, so you can pull out of corners. I'd like a little bit more top end, but um, it seems to work and I'm surprised at how much grip we've got off-road with these Pirelli tyres. So it definitely is a bike that you can have a bit of a scramble on and it seems comfortable enough on the road. I can't wait to put more Ks on this baby on this marvellous road. See what happens. Brakes seem alright. 320mm discs at the front. So they should be. And the longer travel suspension on this trail variant Feels quite sporty actually. I'm not diving under brakes. Feels reasonably planted mid corner. Don't know how much lean I want to put on on these dual sport tyres. So no traction control as you can tell. Probably, probably could do with some switchable traction control. A bike like this doesn't need to have a hundred thousand rider modes or anything like that but I would have liked to have seen some traction control no biggie though I think I need to remind myself a little bit that I'm on a scrambler even the more road going version it's a no sports bike you know it's a roadster and I'm finding particularly on these Pirelli tyres these STR dual sport tyres the bike feels sporty at hand, but the edge grip on those tyres doesn't fill me with a lot of confidence. I can feel the bike moving around a lot on me, and given it was totally my fault, but I did lock up that rear wheel 
mid, mid corner earlier. I always wear sunglasses when I ride, most of the time, because I like to have my visor open. Now, with this screen, oh, it's bright and perfectly readable until I put my sunglasses on. It goes pitch black. It must be something to do with the polarization. I don't know the science of it, but when I put my sunglasses, it goes pitch black. So, look, it's not a big deal, but if you wear sunglasses when you ride your motorbike and you're on this, there's a good chance that you're not going to be able to see what speed you're doing. You're not going to be able to see your fuel. Typically, Benelli, in the fact that it's quirky, it's not perfect. No bike is. Having said that, there is a lot to like. I think the shift is really good. The brakes, perfectly adequate. You know, they're big stoppers up the front. I like the way it fuels. It does exactly what I expect on my right wrist. And more than anything, it just looks really good, I reckon. It's quite unique. The color schemes are quite tasteful. You know, they're understated, but without being boring. I've just swapped the trail for the regular Leoncino 800. It instantly feels more flickable, lighter on turning, as you'd expect. The big difference being that we've got a 17 inch front wheel rather than the 19 inch front hoop and that does exactly what you'd expect it to. Really don't want first there, but I could probably do a wheelie out of it. Woo! I think what this bike probably does a little bit better is the sort of long sweeping corners like this. I found that I felt pretty good when I was riding the trail earlier until we sort of hit the real tight stuff and I really didn't feel too comfortable on the edge of the tyre. So you can't expect that much from a dual sport tyre but still I think the bike didn't feel too comfortable with a significant lean on. We've got a real tight one here. First gear probably a little bit short. little known fact about the Great Ocean Road that actually some of the best riding roads are inland. This is one of them. Almost as beautiful and nowhere near as much traffic. If you go on the uh, Great Ocean Road for the first time, pull out a map and have a look at some of the squiggly lines coming off the Great Ocean Road because it's a good chance it's a mega fun ride. Man, this road is really, really fairly bumpy and it's pointed out to me that the rear suspension on this thing is really quite stiff, sort of in the same way that the tri geez, Triumph Trident felt when it launched. I'm coming out of the seat over these things and we're doing some cowboy shit now. Could this be any further out of this bike's design brief? Well, I think it's fair to say that this is a bit silly. Silly's good though, isn't it? We like silly at Infomoto. Glad to be back on the trail variant. I've been doing all that stupid stuff on the road bike. This makes more sense, doesn't it? A scrambler, scrambling. Whew. Give us a skid, Phil, for the camera. Jeez. Some serious action. This is a track I use, uh, I ride my dirt bike here, I used to ride dirt bikes here. If you watch the Suzuki DRZ video, that was here, whoa.
great single tracks and stuff out here. Sandy, whoops. Basically the last thing I expected to be doing on, effectively, a naked sports bike <laughs> with some knobby tires. We're doing it though, aren't we? It's a bit quicker on the DRZ, I think. Oh! Jesus. Am I going? Alright. Really did not think I'd be doing a water crossing. Nevertheless. Woohoo! Deeper than I thought! <laughs> Mike feels really quite happy on these fire trails. I'm starting to ride it like it's an adventure bike. Once you sort of get used to it a bit. Yeah, it's alright, you know? Don't get too greedy with it, but oh yeah, you can definitely ride tracks like this all day. No worries. Not blast them, but you know, we're not mucking around. Pretty loose surface. It's all right. Respect. Got on the beers last night. Big time. <laughs> it uh, uh we. It became apparent that it was crucial that we won the Bluetooth speaker the out of the <laughs> the stacker. That's right, the arcade stacker machine. I think we put about two hundred bucks into the thing. So that was wise. But um, Powerade's pepping me up already, so all things considered, it's a good day. We're on the ferry to uh, Sorrento, so crossing the Port Phillip Heads. And then going to one of my favourite roads ever, Arthur's Seat. So more motorcycling. I think I'll get another Powerade. <laughs> See you there. Three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> up the top of Arthur's seat. Amazing views around here. Um, I thought we'd better get down to the nuts and bolts of this thing. A couple of thoughts on the Benelli Lanciano 800, what I'm here for. Um, I'll start with what I like, what's good. Uh, the bike presents really well, you know. Um, it's built in China, all Benelli motorcycles are built in China now, but it is designed by Italians, you know, real Italians. <laughs> And so it looks fantastic, particularly the trailer. I think it's a really handsome bike and it sounds great to match. It does a lot of things fine, you know, and to its credit, we took it through things you really should not be taking one through and it got through everything. It survived it uh, unscathed, fine. So look, it's a charming thing, but there are some things that, you know, I'm fine, not so convincing. Um, little things like not being able to see the TFT when I'm wearing my sunglasses. You know, I guess you could just not wear sunglasses, but it's just not something you'd get on, you know, other motorcycles, other TFT screens, it doesn't happen. And, um, you know, I nearly ran out of fuel because I didn't notice that I'd run out of fuel. Anyway, I guess it's a small thing. Um, also, the suspension I'm not totally convinced on. Uh, particularly harsh over bumps, um, and I'm just not very confident on the edge of the tyre. Maybe that could be tuned out. I feel like it needs some more rebound dampening. But that's probably the letdown to me, which brings me to my point. I think if you are looking at the Lanchino 800, I think the trail is the pick. And 
that's because it's got the extended travel suspension so it's much more forgiving over the bumps and you're not really giving up that much on-road performance I don't think and of course you get the versatility of being able to take the thing uh, you know off-road and have a scramble and the price difference is nothing it's uh, 13,490 for the base Leoncino and uh, 13,990 for the trail so a $500 difference so I wasn't overly impressed by the base bike only really because of how I felt with the suspension and um, the on-road grip that was the only thing that really stuck out to me as a negative but the trail look that thing's all right I like it and um, as I said it's really good looking obviously that's an objective opinion but I think it's hard to disagree with it's a proper scrambler you know um, it got through some crazy stuff you know water crossings like I mean it's not that mental but the thing's not an adventure bike it's not a dirt bike so hats off to that um, let me know what you think it's definitely an it's definitely an interesting sort of model um, yeah leave your thoughts in the comments and I'd be happy to get back to any questions cheers Charge it up because it's been there for 12 years. <laughs> That's a fucking 2021 model, mate. That's a 20, yeah. If you know what you were talking about, you'd know that. You wouldn't say something so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. But the question is. No! <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs>